Hey guys, welcome to this week's Sunday Spin, where we take the music that we're spinning this week. I'm Terry, this is Laura from Riot Squad Media. A um, couple things before we start, August 13th, if you don't know already, we're having our Friday the 13th shenanigans, I guess, at uh, West Steel City Destroyers at Porky, Porky's Bar and Grill out in Pittsburgh, I believe. So yeah, make sure you go check it out. We will have a special discount for camp passes, so you make sure you, if you do want your ticket, come pick it up there. Um, Laura, who are you spinning this week? So this week, um, normally I know that we try to pick things that have just come out or that are new to our ear holes, but um, this band came on my shuffle the other day and I haven't been able to shut them off since. And I kind of forgot about them a little bit, but um, I've been jamming to the Suicide File. If you guys haven't heard of these guys, they are a boss, well, we're a Boston hardcore band. Um, just fantastic. This is their second album released in 2005, so. <laughs> Not any time, not any time recently, but um, it's called Some Mistakes You Never Stop Paying For. And this whole thing is a goddamn ripper right from start to finish. Um, for anyone that knows me, and actually when I introduced Terry to this band, she, she hit the nail right on the head. But for anyone that knows me knows I love the Bronx. And this album gives me such Bronx vibes, it's not even funny. Um, first Bronx, I believe, came out in 2003. This was a couple years after, so wow. like. It's just very, ooh, very full of so much energy. So It's so gritty, got a lot of growl to it, but they're really polished as well. So anyway, um, this came out on that Southern California hardcore label, Indecision Records, and it's 16, or I'm sorry, 18 songs, a little over a half hour long. Again, it's hardcore. They're short, they're quick, they're sweet to the point, um, and they get you going. If I had an hour to talk about this whole album i totally would so if you want to chat about this with me hit me up later and we can but unfortunately we're only going to chat about a couple songs my couple favorites are going to be cold snap um i love the opening riffs in here and the way that it just explodes with these big vocals again he reminds me a lot of matt and his vocals and that's my favorite voice in all of punk rock and hardcore hands down um and this actually rolls into another song called things fall apart and these two go so beautifully together that I couldn't not mention this one. They tell a story of quite a bit of heartbreak if you listen to them both and uh, things fall apart reminds me a lot of Murder City Devils who I also love. I'm actually stoked to see them at Punk Rock Bowling this September but um yeah I, I love I love these and this also rolls into another track that I love Landmine. This one is like a minute long just straight fire. Um, you'll be circle pitting in your kitchen, in your living room, whatever you're doing, it's awesome. But for me, the best track on this whole album is the title track, Some Mistakes You Never Stop Paying For. It has the sickest bass line in the beginning, you guys. It's so great. Again, it just explodes with these big, crazy vocals. And one of my favorite lyrics ever is actually in this song. And if, I used to believe you and me were gonna shimmer <clears throat> like the spikes and chains. And I think that that's so awesome. So again, this is one that you want to listen to. You hear this this kind of story of, of love and heartbreak, and this whole album carries right through. Normally, these guys are kind of political, but this one was a pretty personal album, and I, I relate to it a lot. I love it. To me, it's the perfect hardcore song. This whole album is the perfect hardcore album. Go check it out if you haven't already. Um, Terry, who are you spinning? Uh, so I completely stepped outside my bubble today, or this week, I guess I should say, and I decided to go with Ramon score. Um, I don't tend to listen to it often, but when I do, and if I hit the right band, I, I just can't put it down. And this is very evident with this band. Um, these guys are out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, they're called The Real Sickies. They came out with this album just uh, the 9th of this month um, through Stomp Records. The album is called Love is for Lovers. Uh, very, as you can see here, the, here. The album art is just amazing. Um, I don't know who drew it, but if you do, let me know because I am very hooked on this design. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're Ramon score, they're that pop rock. They, I find them to be a bit more 70s uh, Ramon, so that really style, that little bit heavier style. So if you're a big fan of like Halfway to Sanity, then this is the album for you. It opens up a communication breakdown. Um, the guitar throughout this is a bit harder. And I find that's kind of like Ramon's later and like in the beginning they were very poppy but then as it went it just really kind of built their sound so it's got that 70s guitar it's very it has that very kind ramon score essence to it um ben disasters vocals always they're perfect he kind of sounds a bit like the lead singer from main jeans or the strokes and he's got that vivid accent 
Um, this song, the hooks and the chorus throughout this was just awesome. Um, most of these songs actually do have like really good solos, like whoever the guitarist is and who's doing them, they're nailing them every time. And this is kind of like the music that I grew up to, so it's very like a lot of stuff that just made me want to like think back home or just dance around. I really enjoyed it. Um, also, I find that this band, if you like Chicks Dig It or The Real Mackenzies, um, you'll hear that kind of that Canadian pop punk sound to it. And a big reason for that is actually the bassist from The Real Mackenzies, which is um, Mario Nueva, was actually part of writing this album. So, uh, especially uh, Communication Breakdown. So you will hear that throughout this song. It is fantastic. Make sure you check it out. Um, another song, which is about song number four, um, is give and take and I kind of find this is like pop punk meets a little bit of country um, I guess they're it's a duet and they have a female. She's an indie country singer called Lucette and Wow the two of them together Ben and her they just make magic. I absolutely loved it I actually played it for my kid and she was just hooked. She made me play it three more times when we we're driving <laughs> That's <the next>. awesome. <laughs> um, I know I definitely hit it big. She's like is she in the band all throughout? And I'm like, oh no, honey, she's just in this song. And she's like, oh. So, um, <laughs> guys, I don't know if there's something to consider for later on down the road. Uh, you definitely hit a gem with her. And this song, uh, beautiful. The melody is absolutely tight throughout this. Um, there's a really nice guitar solo again right before that final chorus. And it just completely blew me away. I was completely hooked. Um, it's that very like hardcore rockabilly type sound. So it's just, you know. And also the drumming, I find he drums a lot like Bill Stevenson from The Senate, so he's got that, his style, very similar, and it completely had me right hooked in too. I find the whole band to be so well put together, so I was really impressed throughout L. And this was kind of the first time I had heard from these guys, but they've been around for a while. Actually, this album took three years to make, so um, the thinking that went behind this definitely came through on the album these guys did a fantastic job uh last song i'm going to talk about is jeepster um again that 70s ramon score definitely something that i grew up with love um i find that adds a little bit of spice to it though it's it some songs are just like they add that little harder element that 70s rock definitely comes through it really comes through with this song a little bit of that harder singing and stuff like that um the vocals again just nail it. I love his range. I love how he hits those really nice high notes, but it's not high where you feel like your things are in a place, but you know, and then he can really bring it down too. And I find his, you know, his range definitely with that give and take song you'll see that with, um, but especially if this song too. And yeah, um, actually, a lot of their songs throughout it could have been written by like Cat Bite or Half Past too, because they still have that, I don't want to say it's ska, but that rockability that these guys have and that bubble, bubblegum punk um, essence is in throughout a lot of these songs. So take it from me, go check these guys out. I promise you will not be disappointed. Uh, and this is our shadow portion. So Laurie, who are you shouting out this week? Okay, so all the Boston love this week, you guys. Um, <laughs> And Ska, apparently, too, right? So I am shouting out Big D and the Kids Table. And hey. for those who don't know, October 22nd, they have their, I believe it's their ninth studio album coming out. It's called Do Your Art. So you should go pre-order that, pre-save it, do all the fun stuff that you need to do because this album is awesome. Um, I believe it was just last week or two weeks ago, they dropped their first single off of it. It's called Too Much. And this is, it feels like home, you guys. It really does. It's straight third wave ska, and it is everything wonderful in the world. So definitely go check it out. Terry, who we shouting out this week? I love those songs. They just kind of like, ah, you know? It's like yeah, and I, like every time I hear Big D, I just get super excited. They're great live. I'm super excited for this next album because that means tour. So <laughs> I'm ready for it. So, um, Laura went older. I'm going to go a little bit older too, but maybe not as far as 2005. But this song actually came out <laughs> in 2016, but they wanted to immortalize it this year. So they put it as a music video. It's from Broken Cuffs. These guys are from Palmsdale, California, a Miranda Desert. And they actually put it out ahead of uh, their writing their LP, or I guess recording their LP starting next month. So um, the song's called Media Takeover. So make sure that these guys are gonna be coming out with some new stuff in the fall. Make sure you check them out. And with that, we will see you guys next week.